Now we're going to take you through the different steps for installing Uku. First though, check you have everything you need. Your Uku should include the wall mounted controller, the main module, the temperature sensor, two cables for the temperature sensor and door switch, and one slightly longer cable for the wall mounted controller. You'll also need your own power drill, cable stripper, cutting pliers, screwdriver, and marking pen. Let's get started with the thermostat. You first need to choose the right spot for it. Bear in mind that temperature is not evenly distributed inside a sauna. It gets hotter higher up and also varies a bit in relation to where you've placed your heater, ventilation and any other cooler surfaces like glass. It will also briefly get colder near the door when that opens. So which temperature should you be measuring? We recommend putting the sensor at least about half a meter from any of those distorting factors and as close as possible to where you'll be sitting. That way, you are measuring the actual temperature of the heat that you and your guests will be enjoying. For this installation, we've assumed that you already have the sensor cable ready, just like your SEP has here, so he just needs to clean the ends of the cables. You can then attach the cables. before then screwing the thermostat to the wall. Next, we'll attach the door sensor, which automatically shuts off the heater when the door is opened. This sensor consists of two parts, the actual sensor that goes on the door frame and the magnet it connects to, which goes to the door. You need to put the sensor on the side of the door where it opens and also low down so it's not noticeable and the heat doesn't loosen the attachment. First, drill a hole into the door frame where the sensor will go. It must be just deep enough to allow the door to fully close. Again, we've assumed here that the rest of your wiring is already set up. Now you need to clean the cable ends and connect those cable ends to the terminals of the sensor. Opposite the hole for the sensor, you can now secure the magnet to the door. It's simply attached using double-sided tape. That will hold firm as long as the sensor is low enough down on the door like this one. You can then insert the sensor into the door frame. Just make sure you secure it so that both parts are aligned when the door closes. Finally, you now just need to connect the cable ends to the main module. Now we're going to install the actual wall mounted controller that you'll be using to control the whole system. This must be placed outside of the sauna hot room, but it can be used anywhere that is most convenient for you. The most common place is next to the sauna door. However, some people have put it in the lounge or even their bedroom. Think about not just where you want to switch your sauna on and off, but also where you might want to glance over and monitor the temperature as it heats up. You need to secure the wires to your wall mounted controller. Just make sure you carefully match up the right numbered cables here. This is the most common source of the problem when people think their heaters might not be working. In some controllers, for example, the numbers run backwards, which some people don't notice. This work is a little bit fiddly, but we've added these wire sleeves to help. Here's another top tip. Make sure you get a photo of the wiring here after it's finished. Either give this to your client if you are the electrician or ask your electrician for this if you are the client. That way, if there's a problem in the future, it's much easier for us or anyone else to see where the issue might be, or at least rule out that there's no problem with the wiring configuration. That saves a lot of time. The electrician can now connect the power cable to the cable screws on the Uku control panel before fixing it to the wall. For that, simply take away the dial in the middle, then you can attach the device to the wall with screws behind that before replacing the dial again. The wooden case is a bit different. For that, you just need to open the casing using a Torx 6 screwdriver to see where the screws go. Now let's find a good spot for the main module. It just needs to be somewhere that doesn't get hotter than 50 degrees Celsius and doesn't get more than 95% humidity. We've seen customers put this in all kinds of places, including in a technical room or under a suspended ceiling. We don't really recommend putting it inside the hot room if you can help it, but some people do if it's the only suitable space they've got available. If so, just make sure it's about 10 to 50 centimeters from the floor and as far away from the heater as possible. You could even place it outside, 
but then you should build some kind of protective cover for it. Don't forget, if you have the Uku Wi-Fi or GSM, then you also need to make sure it can reach the signal. Once you've got your spot, you can then easily fix it to the wall. After that, the electrician can start connecting the cables for the wall-mounted controller and the sensors. Don't forget to look carefully at the numbers you need to match up. As with the wall-mounted controller, we recommend that you take a picture, just in case there are any issues in future, because that will make it much easier for someone to spot any problems without opening it up again. Try to take a few pictures from slightly different angles that show the cables actually entering the holes, not just from directly on top. Now the electrician can connect the power line to the heater. Don't forget, all cables to and from the main module need to have the same cross section. Then that power line needs to be connected to the main module. Once again, don't forget to save a picture after you've connected it. You never know when that information might be useful in future. Connecting the lights or ventilation is optional, but it's a great added extra. You can choose one of these at a time, then connect it to the LL, LN outputs on the control console as shown here. Right, now let's test that everything is in working order. You don't need to wait until the stones are in for that. Start by simply turning on the screen of the wall mounted controller, spinning the dial to choose a temperature, then pressing it to start the heating process. You'll know pretty quickly if it's working because the heating elements will glow red and emit heat quite fast. There's no need to touch it, otherwise you might burn yourself. Don't forget, the sauna door has to be closed for this to work. Once it starts emitting heat, you can then test that door sensor too, by opening and closing the door to check that it shuts off properly. If you have Uku Wi-Fi or Uku GSM, you can now connect it to the network. Remember, it's only the main module in the Uku system that you've just installed that has to be within the signal range but then you can use your app from anywhere. Let's start with Uku Wi-Fi. Hold the main button down for 10 seconds and that will bring up the settings menu. Go to Wi-Fi settings, then select SSID. You'll then see a list of Wi-Fi networks within range, so just select yours. By the way, your Wi-Fi network name has to be less than 20 characters for this to work, so you should rename it if it's longer. Then enter your password. Then click connect and follow any additional instructions on screen. You'll know the process is complete when you see that little Wi-Fi symbol at the top. If you have Uku GSM, then connecting that is even simpler. There's already a SIM card embedded inside your controller and that will be activated automatically about 30 minutes after you connect the app to your sauna. So whether you've set up the Wi-Fi or are using GSM, you next just have to register on the Who map using your unique sauna ID and code. To turn on the control panel, simply press the dial. When you press it again, it will start heating, which is indicated by these wavy heat lines. Press it one more time and it will stop heating. The screen goes off automatically when the sauna isn't heating and the panel isn't being used. Okay, let's choose the temperature. You'll see two numbers on the screen. The smaller one in the upper right corner is your target temperature. You can move the dial to set that at whatever temperature feels comfortable for you up to 110 degrees Celsius. In the center of the screen is the actual temperature right now in your sauna. You'll see that rise steadily when your sauna is being heated. To find the timer, press and hold the dial for three seconds. Turn the dial to select your desired time then one short press of the dial will activate it for your chosen time. Back in the settings menu, you can also switch on the child lock feature. This then activates every time the controller screen goes off. To switch the controller on after that, you just need to press and hold the dial as you usually do, but then also turn it 15 degrees clockwise back, then 15 degrees anti-clockwise, then back into the center. It's pretty simple, but it prevents kids from accidentally turning it on if they start fiddling with it. If you've connected your lights or ventilation inside your sauna, this can also be activated from the settings menu. Once that's done, all you need to do is press the dial two times when you want to switch them on or off. 
Finally, you can also select the heating time instead of remembering to switch it off, which is particularly useful for public saunas. There are options of 3 and 6 hours for private saunas, 12 hours for semi-public saunas, and 18 hours for public saunas. If you have Uku Wi-Fi or Uku GSM, you can download your Whom app from either the Apple App Store or Google Play because it works on both the iOS and Android operating systems. To sign up, start by filling out some basic details. You then need to insert your sauna ID and sauna code, which can both be found printed on your main module. You can change these inside the app if you want. That's especially handy if you want to give your guests access to the app, but also want to change the password afterwards. Just like on the wall-mounted controller, you can select your target temperature by scrolling around this circle that has the actual temperature inside. Your sauna is now heating. Remember though, you must not heat your sauna remotely if there's anything left inside the hot room. And if you've left the door open before leaving the house, then the app won't let you switch it on. As with any app, make sure you keep downloading any updates. Here at Whom, we're working on some really great new features that we can't wait to show you in future.